Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Coming up, Spider Co. reveal number 14. That's the last one of the year. I get a replacement Olight and nine rapid reviews. Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, this first favorite comment from this past week was from Intoxicagen. Great name, by the way. He says, I've been into knives since I was a kid, and now I'm in my 60s. I've had many, many knives from cheap junk to high end. I feel naked without one. I think we all know how that feels. If you could only grab one knife leaving the house when the shit hits the fan, it would be a cold steel. I don't know which one I would choose, but it would be a cold steel. The steel that locks, uh, uh, the steel and locks represent a value unsurpassed in the industry. They give me the ability to buy many knives simply because I like the design or it fills a self defense role, but are still very well made. I will pick one up, uh, the serrated, and throw it in my pocket when we go some when we're going somewhere and cannot carry a gun or just walking my dog because we've been attacked by a stray pit bull. Uh, their serrated blades uh, in the crazy curve of the Spartan Voyager and Raja are crazy cutters. Lynn Thompson, thank you so much for going through the trials and tribulations to bring us great products. We'll always be a huge fan. And that's Intoxication. And you will have to excuse that awful read, but uh, we get the point. And I feel that really resonated with me. I I've pretty much said something very similar um, uh, over and over and over. I love cold steel knives and it's great to see uh, someone appreciating all the effort that went into making that great company and we like seeing it uh, continue uh, after he has uh, left that main role so thanks intoxication and then the uh, the second comment uh, was from babab42174 and he said gotta say thank you so much for introducing me to hogtooth knives matt's overall design aesthetic sync up to my personal wants in a knife. And uh, I like hearing that a lot, uh, not only uh, because Matt's a friend of mine, but I like getting uh, people together, uh, someone who likes this kind of knife, someone who makes this kind of knife, getting those people together, uh, that brings me great joy. It's like when I used to fix friends up in college and see them go off into flourishing relationships. That, that happened once, but it made me feel great. All right, uh, all that said, Let's get to a pocket check. Today and for the past couple of days, I've been carrying this. I love this knife. This is the uh, Night Fox Elements MK Ultra, designed by Jason Knight. Uh, the get the uh, one of the hosts of Forged in Fire, not a host, but a um, a judge, if you will. Uh, he was a guest judge when uh, Jay Nielsen had a, a pretty big surgery, and he was loved. Everyone loved him. Really put him on the map beyond uh, the people who knew him and loved him for his custom work. He's known for his kukris, and to me, this is uh, custom forged kukris, uh, and to me, this is. Uh, the creme de la creme of folding kukris. This is my favorite folding kukri design. And it got a lot of use uh, this past weekend, uh, throwing a big party for my wife. Uh, it, it was doing a lot of different duties and uh, it never got kicked out of my pocket. Not necessarily because I really just wanted this, but I was, I was moving the whole time and I didn't have time to peruse my knives and labor over what to carry. So this just kept going in my pocket because uh, this is what I started the weekend with and stayed there. And what a great knife this is. And I got to say, yeah, that Kukri cuts amazingly. That recurve is incredible. Uh, this is um, N690CO, a very, very common steel used by Italian uh, knife makers over there. <clears throat> Next up in my front right pocket, uh, that's where I've been carrying slip joints lately. Front right pocket was the beautiful C. Reisner Cutlery Ohio River Jack. Uh, this in the single bladed Warncliffe uh, came in a double bladed uh, that had the Warncliffe, this blade, and a um, 
spear point. You can get the spear point and a, an additional, a third blade, the sheep's foot, uh, all in single bladed variants. And I think they have a few left, uh, but they are now focused on a new uh, knife, which I'll be showing off a little later uh, in the in the nine quick reviews. Uh, this thing is got amazing action. It's a really great cutter. This also has gotten a lot of use. Um, it's been in my pocket quite a bit uh, with this beautiful Kevin Duty made. That's Duty Daggers uh, leather slip. I'm going to get into that later and show that off and show how it's really taken on the shape of this knife but uh, this this is such a great knife this was on baguette duty that's my thing these days baguettes uh, it's more um uh, it's more economical to get a baguette and have it last two or three days uh, than to get bagels every day um plus i just i love them they're delicious so uh this that makes a great baguette cutter make no mistake the Ohio River Jack. Uh, speaking of hogtooth knives, I had the Tonto in my waistband today. This is the the other knife that just did constant duty uh, for the past, I don't know, five days at this point. And not out of uh, a desire not to carry other knives, but just because this is what I had out. And I've been in a grab and go um, mode. And uh, love this thing, of course. This is the knife that made me fall in love with uh, with the hogtooth knives and carrying fixed blades all the time uh, this was basically the one that broke me into that concept and then of course the one that the nova one was built off of that that handle and then for emotional support again in a grab and go manner uh this is just so easy to grab and throw in the pocket it's the pinkerton broadhead it was my emotional support knife today and uh, this i've been carrying it a lot i love just dropping this in the pocket it's very um quick and easy and sometimes you kind of forget it's there and then you reach in your pocket, and there it is. Uh, of course, a bunch of different grips, uh, but really uh, a, a great fondle toy, if you will, or worry stone. Let's call it that instead. Um, but a great sort of worry stone. Uh, you can confidently have it on the finger without worrying about dropping it on that incredible acute tip. And you can, you can just kind of uh, impregnate that G Carta with your with your with your oils <laughs> oh that's just gross all right well this is what i had on me today the mk ultra the ohio river jack the edc tonto by hogtooth knives and the great and powerful dirk pinkerton so two custom uh fixed blade knives on me by two awesome fixed blade knife makers uh or i should say just awesome knife makers so very excited about that i'm a lucky man for sure uh okay i just wanted to uh drop a little promo here to remind people anyone in texas oklahoma or anywhere anywhere uh come to the texas custom knife show in conroe texas i'm gonna be there that's november 4th and 5th i'm so excited i've been invited there i'm not just going for fun but i am going for fun uh but i was invited to go and i'm i'm honored i'm gonna help judge uh in the knife uh making competition i'm gonna um be meeting people like jay nielsen uh, who i have met and had on the show but um, it's nice to be in person with people, right? And I'll also get to meet Doug Markaida. And that means if you come to the show, you too can meet them. And also, I'd love to meet you too. I know we have a lot of listeners and viewers in, in uh, Texas. So I'd love to, if anyone's there and you see me, introduce yourself. Uh, otherwise, if you, if you hadn't heard of it, the Texas Custom Knife Show in Conroe, Texas, uh, was born from contestants, uh, from Forged in Fire, who wanted a place to show off their work and continue the sort of camaraderie uh, that they celebrated during that show. And uh, it over the past five years, it has turned into a bigger and bigger and bigger show. And uh, Forged in Fire people will be there, like I said, Doug Marquette, Jay Nielsen, and, uh, and others, and then a bunch of contestants. And then there's a live forging contest. There's axe throwing or tomahawk throwing contest. There's blade sports going to be there. And up uh, table after table of of um, custom knives for sale of course and then um, you can learn how to forge all this kind of cool stuff so i am so pumped up and excited i love it i love fall i've never been in texas in the fall i've only been there uh, just driving through in my 20s so it's been ages and i have a thing uh, in my mind for texas i'm looking forward to checking that out so um i will be there and i hope to see you there
All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some Knife Life news, some great and exciting stuff emerging out of Blade Show West. Still to come on the show. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, if you haven't handled a Jack Wolf pocket knife yet, they are everything you want in a modern slip joint. Super snappy with materials like CPMS 90V and integral titanium liners and bolsters. And a new run of their Vampire Jack are now available. From Spartan Blades, the USA-made Alala features 1095 Crovan carbon steel and is ready to get to work every time. The molded sheath features an active retention lever and securing strap. You can't go wrong for $149. And a Bark River Knives exclusive, the Little Creek 2 in Magna Cut. It's convenient to carry it under 2.5 ounces, and the blade is a slicing machine made from Magna Cut stainless steel. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, theknifejunkie.com slash free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Spyderco just announced its reveal number 14, the final reveal of the year. I've been liking this uh, reveal system, and I, I'm 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 probably I'm pretty sure that a lot of Spyderco collectors like it too, because anticipation isn't built as as long and as disappointingly. Uh, but this uh, reveal shown off at Blade Show had a couple of really uh, cool things uh, in it. And we're going to stop on this first one here. Uh, this is a Sal Glesser design. Sal Glesser, the the uh, founder of Spyderco, you know, he is the elder statesman of the company and his son, Eric, has taken over um, and taken over a lot of the designing of, uh, well, he does a lot of the the uh, some of the signature designs, but this is Sal coming back out and he's the guy who started it all. So it's kind of exciting. And it's really cool to see this uh, 3.4 inch S30V uh, leaf shaped blade. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful blade. It's a nearly full height hollow ground S30V blade. But I really like seeing it on this style handle. Now, you don't frequently hear me say that I like not having a finger guard. This has a an extremely minimal finger guard. And I think that that is what makes the overall package of this small. So it's got sort of an overall uh, smaller overall size, which I think is kind of cool, but you still have that big, broad, and I got to say, beautiful uh, leaf-shaped blade. Um, so this is a, definitely a highlight of this reveal. And of course, you see uh, his own invention there, the compression lock. Uh, so it's going to be a fidget king, no doubt. This is uh, a Spyderco I would not mind having, but I feel burned. I don't know. Uh, it, it was Blade HQ's fault. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it right there. Okay, so next up, uh, Para Two, uh, yes, in Magna Cut, and this is part of their Salt series, which I gotta say is a huge tip of the hat to Magna Cut. Uh, we all know Magna Cut is, and I'm gonna say the flavor of the of the moment, and and that's usually sounds negative, but it's not. It's it's just so good that everyone wants it. And it has so many applications, it can even go into the salt lineup, you know, which has uh, traditionally used H1 steel or LC200N, um, which, uh, at, you know, Magna Cut, if it can be on these knives, uh, you can, if it can hang with those other blade steels, um, but it's also Magna Cut, that just shows you how good that steel is. I know that sounds ridiculous, but we all know at this point the qualities of that steel. So, you know, tough, high toughness, high corrosion resistance, and and high uh, edge retention, a, and a high Rockwell hardness. So it's all, it, it, it's, you know, hitting all of the magic numbers. But this, in that uh, peanut butter and chocolate handle, they're calling it, I love it. Sounds delicious. I don't, I don't like the way it looks, but, uh, but I like what they call it. Anyway, that's in the salt series. So Magna Cut making its way uh, there, which is cool. And then uh, we scroll down. There's the Spy Mito. This is one of those real limited. Ed no, we're going to go down below that. That's another salt model. Very cool. The stretch to the large. That's beautiful. Uh, but uh, down here, uh, the this next one here, that's a collaboration with Lion Steel. And we've seen them do that before. Uh, with the SR11, I think it was, and they turned it into the Spy Opera. 
Well, this here is uh, this here is based on the um, Lion Steel Mito, which is a uh, you know a, a um, popular flipper from them, uh, but it's getting the Spiderco treatment with the hole and all of that. So uh, you got my Carta there. You've got M three ninety eight. So eight better than M three ninety. I'm not sure what M three ninety eight is like, but my Carta tie frame lock. Uh, a cool one. I like it when they do collaborations with companies like Lion Steel and they do the build. And I think it's a, a cool sort of a cool thing to do. That cool kind of collaboration. And then last, the last thing I want to show here is the Mule Team fixed blade down at the bottom. Uh, this is a um, always been a test bed for new steels. When Spyderco gets a, a new steel, they get uh, they put it in the the Mule Team. We saw Magna Cut. We've seen all sorts of steels, and now this one is in a high impact ceramic zirconia fortified. Um, so I think that is tremendously cool. I think it's cool that they do this period. I also like that um, it ships like that. So you can put your own handle on it or uh, cordage or whatever, but I think that's kind of cool. And uh, I love that they're doing zirconia fortified high impact ceramic because you know, why not? But very, very cool. So that is the Spyderco drop number 14, the last one of the year. Uh, well done, Spyderco. Next, a fixed blade line by Case Knives. Now, this is pretty cool, especially uh, this first knife I, I find especially cool. But uh, it's the Case Pro series of fixed blades. And these are designed by professional outdoorsmen. Both of them happen to be hosts of TV shows. Uh, uh, Laramie Miller, who designed this first knife, this recurve that's just tremendous to look at. Uh, he's the host of an outdoor show on the Sportsman Channel, a couple, I think. And this one is lovingly called the Sasquatch Bowie. I like the name, uh, obviously. I like I, I like. Buoy. I'm going to say buoy right now because people have been yelling at me. And I like Sasquatch. Put them together, you get this beautiful knife in 1095 blade steel. That's a 7.63 inch blade. And that recurve is just gorgeous. Recurve clip point. I love that knife uh, just from looking at it. It's got a nice uh, wood handle there. Uh, Laramie Miller also designed a Skinner for the same um, for the same lineup. That's a four inch. Uh, and then if we scroll down, we'll see one from Roland Welker, and he is uh, made famous from Histories Alone, and he's got this really cool Hunter 6.5 inches, uh, another beautiful knife. It's got a, you can see a slight recurve there. Uh, it, it's got a straight blade with a belly, but it's got an overall arc on the back, which is put, pointing the edge down a little bit. So you're going to get really good shearing and cutting with this knife and it's also in 1095 uh and mr welker also designed a 4.13 inch skinner these are all in 1095 and i gotta say uh they're handsome and i feel like case knives has done some sort of awkward knives like i don't find their flippers particularly compelling uh they have that very classic classic uh naval buoy that everyone loves um so i i like seeing them come out with this real I don't know. To me, it seems like a, a pretty legit lineup. And I, I love the designs that I've seen so far. So looking forward to that. OK, next up, uh, I want to talk about Boker's EDC Kukri. We were just talking about EDC Kukri's here with the MK Ultra. Um, well, these are from a self-described welterweight semi-pro knife designer called Cornell Kiss from Hungary. And uh these sort of kukrioid blades, and that is a, a term I could hear my dad say, but it is actually borrowed from Ben Schwartz of Knife News, I, I will say, kukrioid here. Uh, two of them uh, in different sizes. The first is the Macri, and that's what we're looking at right here, uh, a, a little kukri, 2.8 inches, D2, full tang, G10, nice red liners, a, a, a beauty. Actually, this is the larger one, sorry. Uh, and I can tell because there's a swedge on this one. And I, I know that it's the large one with the swedge. And that's called the Mikri, M-I-K-R-I. And that's a 3.11, 3.11 inch D2 blade. Uh, everything else I rattled off before still stands. Full tang, G10, red liner. Very nice looking. Uh, comes in a couple of finishes. And Jim, if you don't mind scrolling down, 
I think there might be the small one represented down below in a picture, if I'm not mistaken. But I love the kukri. I love you. You're going to get some incredible. No, that's it. My bad. Well, uh, you're going to get some incredible cutting power with that small with those small blades with that recurve. And I got to say also just on an aesthetic level, I think they're also very uh, pretty handsome blades. Uh, last up, this, speaking of, God, speaking of good-looking knives, uh, this is from Tashi Barucha, who is just uh, the consummate artist, man. He is like the, the consummate artist designer. Uh, and I know uh, design is his um, was his main job. Um, what a cool dude, man. Uh, really, uh, living in Paris, has a family, designs incredible knives, has a really cool career that's a his other career and uh he's doing this with we I, it makes me sick it's so beautiful i shouldn't put it that way it's called the speed liner and it's i don't know this might have to be the tashi design i actually acquire because i could never quite justify or afford the the ckf tashis and uh and and uh this one just really really sings to me it is beautiful look at the handle on this uh, anyway the speed liner uh it's sort of what would you call that? A trailing point? Maybe maybe flirts with Tonto slightly um, on that beautiful curved handle. Looks like it just nestles right in the palm. It's going to be great for thrusting, but it's also going to be great on a pull, pull cut or a slash or anything like that because of that arced handle. It's going to it's going to position the point down low and that edge in such a way that it it acts essentially like a recurve because of the triangle behind the edge beautiful uh comes in in uh, uh a stone wash a satin two black bladed and one damasteel and then it comes in three different titan or two different titaniums a gray and a bronze and then and a black so that makes three and then two carbon fibers i just think the thing is gorgeous uh blade uh steel wise that's 20 cv uh inline flipper so you know this is one of those tashi barucha flippers that you barely see and i love them i think they're really cool but when you grab onto it and you pull it it rockets out so it it sort of negates the need for a flipper protruding out like that um so, uh, yep, five finishes uh, available shortly. Uh, so look forward to that shortly, whatever that means. All right, coming up on the state of the collection, I have one thing. I've got a couple of things coming in, but I have one thing to show, and it's not much, but I want to talk about how awesome it is. Coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. The humble keychain light. Well, I didn't realize how much I rely on it, and uh, I really do. Uh, I recently got my car fixed. It's at 126,000 miles. I, Roxanne, you are my baby. I love you. She's a she's a big old pilot, and she, she's the family truckster that keeps on going. Uh, but I did have to have some maintenance. You know, 125,000 miles will uh, take it out of you. So uh, while it was in. Um, I took the key off, and at some point, I lost my blue Olight, uh, my favorite, the i1 RT, R2 Pro EOS. It doesn't roll off my tongue, but it's the little one that I love. And so here it is. Uh, my old one was blue, and it got so nicely um, marred. Uh, that anodization wore off so nicely being on the keys. So I'm sure it will not take long for this, but... This light, if you if you need a, this, I, I swear, I think this would make a great EDC uh, pocket flashlight. I, I know a lot of people, you know, are really into their flashlights and and they have to be, you know, a little bit bigger and a lot more powerful and have more options and stuff. But this has two two brightnesses. All you got to do is turn it and you get one one light where you don't want to blow your eyes out in the dark, in the total dark. Uh, and you're just you just need to find something or when you need to light up the lawn. You've got 
you've got what is this 186 lumens i think um it gets really bright for this little sucker and it's handy and small and uh if i were to carry a flashlight in my pocket i i do carry another o light i can't remember which one it is uh i always talk about it the 3t maybe the one with the spiral pattern um I do carry that in my pocket sometimes, but really, if I were to do it all the time, it would be this. I would drop this little guy in there because I don't need much more than this uh, on the regular, unless we're talking about self-defense, uh, which we're not. By the way, here, let me show you my keys. Uh, I used to keep a knife on here. I don't anymore, um, but I do keep this awesome titanium toothpick, which uh, Jim has seen me pull out at Chipotle before. Um, it's a great it's a great little toothpick uh, and also a titanium clip. And that's all. I don't need all that weight hanging on my uh, on my transmission uh, or on my key, you know, on my, on the keyhole thing. So uh, so I keep it light, all titanium and aluminum. Uh, but uh, check out Olight. They're always having sales and they've sent me some free, uh, some free, um, well, knives, too. We've given those away and lights. We've given most of those away. I I did keep the Arkfeld pretty, pretty sweet. Um, but check them out. Their lights are awesome. I, I don't I don't we'll put recommendations down below. Uh, you might say Phoenix. You might say something else. But I think I think they're pretty, pretty awesome, at least for my needs. Anyway, that's enough about Olight. Check it out if you need a, a, a keychain light. Plus, that thing's rechargeable uh, through USB. Yes, Bob, we know that. Okay, next, let's talk about nine rapid uh, knife reviews. And well, actually, eight rapid knife reviews and one review of something else. And the reason I'm doing this, it's a guilt trip. It's, uh, I, I feel guilty uh, because I have uh, a couple of knives that I've been meaning to share with you a little bit more than just in a pocket check. And I have yet to make a close up video. Uh, but I, I aim to do so uh, real shortly, where I will get very up close and talk about it and do size comparisons but until then let me show you some of these pretty pretty sweet knives here so uh for reviews i guess i just blew it i like them all but uh let's start here uh with the c reisner cutlery ohio river jack uh so jack wolf knives are the are the slip joints i've been carrying uh pretty much all year um every month i had been getting a new one and they're amazing you know how much i love the jack wolf knives um and so it kind of kept my interest in you know how i go through phases well it kept my interest warm with slip joints and uh when this came out i i had to have one but i i held off because i was buying other things uh this is the ohio river jack by c reisner cutlery designed by uh Austin Jackson, uh, whose fa uh, grandfather started this company, and he keeps it going, and he's been doing some really, really cool stuff. Um, but the knife itself, this is made by, uh, this is um, OEM by QSP, and really, really nicely done. Um, there you go. That's M390 blade steel, fully flat ground, super sharp, very nicely shaped. I love the long... Uh, machine pull there that milled pull is great you have enough to pinch here uh, but that really adds to the grip and uh, i'm not sure if you're hearing it there so i'm going to put it next to the mic for a sec so you can get a load of this walk and talk it's uh it's really good they do fantastic they do fantastic slip joints, uh, I'm discovering, because I have another one here I'm going to show in a second. Uh, a titanium bolster and liner here, really nice, strong back spring. Uh, I like the squared off handle. This is a heavy, this is kind of a heavy duty um, slip joint knife. I mean, you could do some, 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 uh, some pretty heavy duty tasks with this, uh, at least for a slip joint, I would say. Um, I really like the micarta on this one. Um, really nice micarta, not too, um, you know, you definitely have, that is canvas and you definitely have the texture of the canvas, but it's not too fuzzy. It's not too flannel, if you will. Sometimes that bothers me. Uh, but, uh, this knife I find to be, uh, flawless. I'm really loving it. And this is a great, um, so I've been steeped in Jack Wolf knives for a, a for over a year and they are 
they are perfection. And it's very nice to find another modern slip joint that is right up there with it. I, I mean, I, to me, this knife is just great. It's got all the hallmarks of a modern knife. You can take it apart. You can do all these things. But it's a really, really outstanding traditional. Um, so I'm going to put this down here. And then the second thing I'm going to show off is close, closely related. If you watched Thursday Night Knives last week, you saw this. This is my custom-made leather slip by Kevin Duty of Duty's Blades. Uh, Duty's Daggers, I'm sorry, who was on the show uh, recently. He... Uh, he did this for here. Here's a sticker. I was just going to show up this dude. Um, he made this for me out of this beautiful uh, hunter green leather, and it has really taken on the shape of the blade uh, without or, or of the knife without much uh, without much doing, though. I do like to sit on these uh, to put them in my back pocket when I first get them leather slips to sort of press them into shape, you know. Uh, the old-fashioned way, if you will. And uh, it really took the form very, very nicely. I love that he has Handmade in the USA stamped in the back. And he put my initials here, BD, which is so cool. I didn't ask for that. Um, I mean, he he made this for me for free. Uh, so thank you so much, Kevin. But I, I got right back on and ordered a slip for the next knife I'm going to show you. Uh, so this thing, I, I really, really like this slip. Uh, I'm going to have to get more and I want a maroon one at some point because I think, uh, but to me, this color combo, he nailed it. I, I did. I said your choice, you choose the leather. And I think he nailed it. Those colors look so good together. Yeah. Classic sort of hunter colors. All right. So next up, uh, also from C. Reisner Cutlery and, uh, oh, so like if I'm reviewing this, if we're going to call this review, yes, excellent. Really, if you've been on the fence about the Ohio River Jack, they are actually on sale right now uh, for a song uh, for what they are. And so I would go check it out at uh, traditionalpocketknives.com. And I will say this, um, uh, when they're done, they're done. Uh, at least we think so far when they're done, they're done. And uh, there are a few left. So go check it out. All right, next up. This is his newest one. This is the Lake Champlain Jack, or I'm sorry, Lake Champlain Barlow. Also designed uh, by Austin Jackson of C. Reisner Cutlery. This is a big daddy. This is a three and a half inch full height hollow ground M390 blade. Uh, in my case, clip point, a beautiful clip point blade. Uh, it also comes in a sheep's foot, if that's more your pleasure. And then it, it comes in five different handle cover, uh, covers. But let's see, one of them, the, the green iguana fat carbon or camo carbon, I'm not sure what it is, is sold out. But there are three sort of exotic carbon fibers that you can get this in. And, uh, or no, wait, I think it's two carbon fibers, two different titanium finishes, one a jigged and one a saw cut. Looks like saw cut titanium. Really cool. And then um, green or black micarta. I think that's what it breaks down to. Um, but I saw the green micarta and was totally smitten right off the bat. I love the gray next to the green. Um, and it's it's walk and talk is amazing. I'm going to bring this over to the to the mic so you can hear it. This also is... Uh, OEM'd over at QSP. Oh, man. So nice. Um, and a cool thing about this is that it's a Barlow. So not only is it big and beefy, but it's a Barlow. So that means it's got this real long um, bolster, which adds strength. This, this Usually a, the bolster on a Barlow is about one-third of the handle. This is like, I'm going to say that's more like... Mm, I don't know. It's a little bit more. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it it it's it's a very big and very and single fluted uh, bolster, and I really like it. The reason that makes it heavier duty is you have more of this uh, strength up front, and that also means they frequently have a longer tang to fit in the longer. Um, so you're going to get just less um, wiggle back and forth, side to side, and or more stability, I should say. There's no wiggle whatsoever, but it's super strong. Uh, very nice, very nice pull here. So I will be getting a Kevin Duty uh, slip for this. 
I'm not sure what color. If he can get maroon, I guess maroon would look beautiful with that green, no doubt. Just look at the Nova one handle. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Nova two design is going to be bouncing over to uh, Matt Chase shortly, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna start thinking about that. Okay, so I just wanted to show this really quickly. Uh, this is the ship that Austin Jackson's grandfather uh, uh, served on. It's the USS Lake Champlain CB thirty nine, and it is a uh, last generation um, aircraft carrier. I'm not sure what that's called, but, uh, you know, before these big uh, nuclear-powered supercarriers, it was this. Korean War. Essex class. Sorry. Essex class. All right. Uh, next up, uh, another, speaking of Jack Wolf knives, another beautiful slip joint here. I'm going to show that, but uh, I was talking about how uh, awesome Kevin Duty slips are. I still love the Jack Wolf knives slips, too. Uh, uh, really, really nice. I guess I'm just a sucker for leather in its many, many different incarnations. Leather and steel, put them together, egads. But look, look at how this has started to take on that swell center Coke bottle shape. I really love that. Again, this is one that has, uh, you know, put this in the back, in the back pocket, and you forget about it, and you sit on it, and it presses it nicely, and then it form fits, and it belongs to the knife. Uh, but let's talk about the knife. This is my very first uh, all titanium slip joint um, from Jack Wolf Knives. The only other one I have is a Medford uh, Gentleman Jack. And here it is. This is the Vampire Jack, the uh, redo, not the redo, the second release of the Vampire Jack. And uh, there are some subtle tweaks to this design besides the uh, the covers. Now, of course, you see here, uh, the jigged titanium cover has such a, oh my gosh, the, the, the feeling when I first took it out was almost startling. Oh my gosh, I'm so startled. No, but it, it, it has an aggressive texture and some of it is that chalky feel you get from, um, anodized, hard anodized aluminum or, um, or blasted titanium. And, uh, and it has a rawness to it. And, the, and then it starts to very, very nicely and quickly sort of, I don't want to say soften. I mean, it, it's titanium, but it starts to, um, I don't know. I don't know how to say this. Feel nicer to the touch. It was a little, at first, it was a little aggressive. And I was like, this, this is tremendous, tremendous grip. It's like, uh, it's almost like wet micarta. And then being in the in the leather a little bit and and using it and kind of getting my skin oils on it. Now I, I'm not struck by that feeling, um, but I'm a huge fan of the of the jigged titanium. Man, that's just so cool. I'm going to try and hold it still so you can take a look at look at it. Now, uh, that is an S90 V blade and it is hand rubbed satin in that direction as you can see very thinly hollow ground like its brother here older brother by a year also has a very stout pull this is the first run of the vampire jacks from a year ago and you can see some subtle changes uh in the new one the sharpening choil is much deeper uh, in the new one you've got uh, two different offerings in titanium one's all black and uh, the other is this jigged. And then you have a couple of a uh, um, couple two tree uh, carbon fibers. Uh, and then here you got the single fluted bolster. Here you have a double fluted and a triple fluted. Um, just aesthetic. But you have the same incredible uh, lockup or, or I should say walk and talk and action. And on this one, you can see those grind lines. You can see, uh, you know, going north to south, you can see how dramatic that uh, hollow grind is. But you have that same thin hollow grind on this one, just sand it in that direction by hand. Pretty amazing. Uh, this also has signature amazing walk and talk, which I'm going to put in front of the mic here just so you can hear it. And one thing I love, I mean, not one thing, one of many things I love about Jack Wolf knives is at the half stop, it stops like uh, Wiley Coyote. It's like, it like stops with a real authority. I don't know how else to put it, but 
or maybe not like Wiley Coyote because he kind of flops back and forth. This doesn't do that. It snaps out to the half stop and stays there uh, because I'm pretty, I don't like closing. I don't like closing slip joints one handed. And when I have, I've had other knives and you've seen it happen here live uh, flip and, and, and kind of go beyond the backstop just enough to nick my stupid finger, which was uh, just hanging out there ready to get cut. This doesn't do that. Uh, but I wouldn't know because I don't close my slip joints with one hand. All right, so this is available now. I'm going to do a close-up video that's going to post uh, this week, uh, but this one is available um, now at all your at many of your favorite purveyors of knives and probably some you've never heard of. He's got uh, Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives has a really uh, pretty varied and cool uh, distribution um, uh, uh, roster. So check out you can you can find these now so go for it oh as a matter of fact you can you can find them at knife ship free you just saw the liner showing these off uh go there and you can you can go to uh the knife junkie.com slash knives ship free and buy this very knife so there it is very nice okay next up uh this is a knife uh one well this is, this is something something awesome you've heard me talk about it uh and it it is requiring a close-up video but i will tell you the review right now so i've carried it a lot since i've gotten it and i love it this is the civivi synergy 4 based on the it is a jimmo young design uh it is a pretty old design that has seen a resuscitation or a resurrection through we knife and civivi and uh this is the big one four inch blade with a tanto you can also get it four inch blade with an upswept upswept blade um very thin extremely thin blade very extremely sharp at the at the edge pretty broad uh nice broad tanto with a high flat grind and that chisel tip is flat also and like i said like deceptively sharp you can just see from the from the blade stock there um that is nitro v blade uh blade steel and uh, I like Nitro V. I have a handmade Pinkerton uh, EDC blade that's Nitro V, and I really like it. Uh, this has G10 handle scales. Well, first of all, the, the contours of the handle is incredibly comfortable. This is a big knife. Uh, you can choke up on it. You can kind of choke back on it uh, if you need to uh, reach out like that. So it's a, it's a big enough knife to do all that. You can even hold it in Pakal very comfortably uh, if that's your if that's your wanting at the time. Um, but what I especially love about the handle of this, which makes this great as a tactical knife, because obviously a big four inch Tonto like this is it's, it's a kind of tactical knife, right? Uh, this radiating pattern that comes from the pivot of concentric circles. We've seen it on other, we see it in a, in a way on the RSK Mark one, but it just really gives great grip. It's like the unidirectional grip, um, in essence, from Spyderco, even though that's a, a totally different pattern and it's a bunch of little nubs. And uh, this has the same effect, kind of no matter which way you're gripping it, uh, no matter which way you got the pressure, um, it's gripping you some way. Look at that blade. This it's an incredibly beautiful Tonto blade to me. It's, but it's still, okay, so you've got a sweep and you've got a belly, but the way the blade is angled, you still get a tip just right at the top of the pivot. So um, you're still gonna get a lot of utility usage out of this knife. I think this thing is awesome. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's got great action. It's getting greater every day. I bet the, I bet the uh, satin finish or the stonewash finish ones have better action right up front. That always happens with coated blades. It takes a little bit longer to get them super smooth. Uh, but everything about this knife is awesome. Uh, they even are nice enough to flatten the landing spot right under the clip. Let me see if I can show that. See that? That G10 right under the clip is nice and flat. They know that this would shred your pocket in no time. So uh, very nice. Also an inconspicuous flipper tab that really rockets that uh, blade out. That is the one and only um, method of deployment on this gorgeous knife. If you like the design, but four inches is too much blade for you, uh, you can seek out the Wii version 
Uh, and I think Savivi may have done a small version of this also before uh, releasing the large one. Okay, another one that's gotten an awful lot of pocket time, but uh, sadly not a review yet, not a close-up video yet, is the Kaiser Mystic by Paul Munko and Kaiser Knives. Uh, this thing has gotten a lot of pocket time. Um, a beautiful harpoon-shaped blade uh, inspired by the maritime culture and the whaling culture of uh, Paul Munko's hometown, Mystic, Connecticut. Really beautiful. Uh, to me, it... Uh, the design is evocative. It it sort of looks like a whale with that arching, uh, that arching shape, but it also sort of looks like a piece of whale hunting kit. Let's say uh, that harpoon, not to be too on the nose, but the harpoon on the blade uh, really lends itself to to that kind of a that kind of a tool, or you might call it a weapon. Um, you've got really nice linen micarta. You can tell it's linen from the fine weave, and you also have a a collar uh, around that pivot. Uh, a bolster lock, which I love. I love bolster locks. Probably my favorite, um, my favorite kind of lock, just because you get the strength of the of the um, frame lock, but you don't have to mess with it when you're opening it. You don't have to worry about applying too much pressure on that lock bar. But if you are one of those people who think thinks that one of the main selling points of a frame lock is that you you bolster the lock with your grip. You can still be doing that here with a bolster lock, um, just by, you know, grabbing it like that. You're still exerting pressure on that lock. So that's Rex Forty Five Blade Steel. The first time I've ever had Rex Forty Five Blade Steel. Pardon me. It's a high carbon uh, tool steel that patinas. It's patinaing beautifully here, and um, the blade itself is very sharp and very thinly ground at the edge and um, just a great, great cutter. Um, again, you know, I got this and the um, Synergy, the last knife I showed you, on the same day. Uh, I ordered them at different times, but they showed up on the same day, and I've been carrying them both an awful lot the last month or so, and um, they kind of have been competing for pocket time. Part of that is I love them both so much, I just kind of have been compelled to carry them also been busy and lazy and not feeling like rummaging through the drawer as much to to agonize over a selection and being happy to just grab this uh, or the synergy or the next one i'm going to show and i've just been carrying those three quite a bit um but uh, this linen micarta starting to show where my fingers uh, wrap around there um and the blade you can see a little bit of patina um I want it to happen naturally. I've cut some food with it, uh, cut some garlic and onions with it and some meat. Uh, and it's 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 getting there. Uh, but I'm not going to rush it like I do most uh, patinas. Uh, the action is almost nerve-wrackingly awesome. It's, it's so drop shut. It reminds me of the Towser K where I'm constantly opening it up and then seeing if it's loose. And no, indeed, it's not loose. It just has amazing bearing action this as you can see has a um front flipper here it is not the most grippy so with a lot of downward pressure i can make it work with that jimping but the jimping here it seems like it maybe got tumbled so isn't as sharp and grippy where you might want it to be uh great on the reverse flick and maybe a little bit of menace to this knife you know, the blade shape and everything. It looks like it, it It looks like it could handle itself. It looks like it could be an intimidating knife, maybe. But I wouldn't know. I've been bandying it about a lot recently, so loving it. All right, next up, this is kind of in that same... Um, actually, I, 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 I'm going to switch orders here. Next, I'm going to go to the Hi, uh, Artisan Hyperion uh, because this one, to me, kind of fits with the last two I was talking about because it's a super smooth and luxurious knife this is the the birthday knife my birthday knife from this old sword and uh, uh it's got this beautiful s35 vn clip point blade and uh which is evocative of an old school bowie of a western bowie with the downward sweep in the wide belly and the thinner at the ricasso uh, profile and then you of course you have this handle which is also a bolster lock which i've been loving um, 
but it's evocative of a um, gunstock jack handle, right? <laughs> I mean, yes, I know it is, but uh, you can see what I'm talking about here. And uh, then it's got this very cool clip uh, made by, uh, designed by Daryl Castion, Daryl Castion um, of D Rocket Designs. He does a lot of very interesting stuff. And uh, this one for Artisan, the Hyperion, is is a, a little bit different, I got to say, for his stuff, uh, his design. A lot of them tend to be smaller. And I don't remember seeing him ever do a clip point before or since. Seen a lot of daggers. He's got that new one out from with a CRKT uh, that's uh, almost a 90-degree uh, front tip Tonto. That thing's really cool. Uh, so he does some very unique designs. Uh, this one was my fancy dinner steak knife um, uh, a couple of weeks ago when we went out uh, to celebrate uh, Mari's 50th. And you got that titanium there. This thing was so cool, so classy, and uh, got got some looks. Like, oh, he's not your average Joe. He's a special guy. Look at him cutting his steak. Uh, at least that's how I felt. Uh, I did not actually hear anyone say that, but I'm sure they were saying that. They were just keeping it down so as not to uh, embarrass themselves. Very buttery action. Uh, love, I love this knife. Um, yep, the Hyperion. I love Artisan Cutlery. I got to say, CJRB and Artisan are very, very impressive to me for uh, production knife companies. Maybe, maybe I should get the CJRB. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Scoria, uh, not the Scoria, Echo. I need to get the Echo. That is a cool one. Okay, next up, uh, this one from Jimmy Slash and Cold Steel. I've shown this off a bit, but I'll tell you now, I've used it a little bit, and it is a monster. It is a monster. I, I tried to clean. I cleaned up most of the, there's some a little bit of sap on there. I cleaned off most of it, but this, this damn paint because i was chopping up an old table uh is not coming off but anyway a, a little elbow grease i just don't want to mar the nice finish uh but so this is a blade sports approved uh chopper competition chopper designed by the great and powerful jimmy slash uh who well i can't speak for everyone but who doesn't love jimmy slash uh what a great guy and uh and this thing is wicked this is number 11 I got a serial numbered number 11. That's pretty cool. Um, very, very sharp convex grind on this. Convex grind can get very, very, very sharp, but it remains somewhat stout behind the edge. That's why Bark River Knives uses them because they're, their knives are outdoors knives and they're meant for um, hard wood, wood tasks, woodland tasks, whether it's batoning or more likely carving. Um, but you're going to be doing other stuff, cutting rope, cutting uh, food, um, game and such. Um, so, yeah, that apple seed edge or convex edge is a really good choice with something like this knife. Where if you don't know what uh, cutting competitions or blade sports are, uh, it is is just what it sounds like. You have a bunch of different obstacles that you have to chop through with a knife that looks just like this. Ten inch blade, no point uh, cleaver style like this. A quarter inch thick, at least. Uh, no, um, no major weight weight reduction through uh, fullering or or swedging. This is obviously not too much here, or it wouldn't be allowed. Uh, it's got to have one lanyard point. This one has two. Oftentimes on competition choppers, they'll have a lanyard tube right up front near the ricasso, um, so that I, I guess it just enhances grip or or doesn't get in the way as much or something. Um, but I like the option because I also like the idea of doing sort of a D, D guard um, lanyard where you're cinching it tightly from one loop to the other across the back of your hand. Very nice craton grip, checkered. You know, this is a beautiful cold steel production. This is 3V blade steel, my only cold steel in 3V. Just a classic, beautiful um, craton handle here that flares and is contoured on all dimensions. And that wicked bird's beak, this thing is going nowhere. And uh, with the angle of the handle to the blade, you're getting an accelerated cut. So a uh, really, really cool thing. Uh, this Jimmy Slash Chopper, I believe it's a limited edition. Um, eh, maybe not, but it is numbered. So I guess it is. Uh, or at least this first release of it. 
comes with a really nice leather sheath. There's no attachment. This is not a sheath that you're going to put on your belt. This is a sheath. What happened here? Oh, I got a little scratch on my leather. Anyway, it's a uh, it's a sheath just to keep that gnarly blade from cutting you. But uh, you could tuck it in your belt, I guess, if you were motivated. Very, very awesome knife. All right. And last up in my list is a knife from um, the Demco's. This is from Demco knife, uh, Knives. This is the Armager. And I got the coolest one. They're all really cool. Okay, they have the Armager 4 and then the 2. That The 2s are the little keychain knives with the really small blades. Um, but the Armager 4, uh, they have a clip point, and then they have a Tonto, and then they have a serrated Tonto, and then they have a drop point with a sharpened swedge, and then they have this drop point with a serrated edge and swedge this thing is so cool this thing is incredibly cool i'm really psyched that uh, demco knives is producing uh, fixed blades as well as folders we know how much designing he did for cold steel and all the great work he did there and and for him it's a matter you know for for them uh i should say andrew and john at all um it is a capacity thing they're not as big as cold steel so they can't they can't make as many awesome designs all at once, but I love seeing that that their their line keeps expanding and um, into an affordable realm. This is this was eighty bucks shipped. I got this one from uh, Knife Center because it was sold out on the Demco website. That's where I went first. Um, but look at that thing. Uh, this you could also get this in plain edge, but it, it's also sharpened up here. But I just figured that's so extra. I should just go for it. And then if I'm really jonesing for it, I'll get the black version, uh, you know, fully, uh, uh, with the plain edge and get the Tonto 80 CRV steel. Now you might have guessed, uh, I haven't used this for anything, uh, but I have watched Gideon tacticals video where he, uh, he takes the clip point and runs it through its paces. He's a, an outdoorsman and does some serious testing and, uh, it shines, it shines. So the armature series, um, you know, flexes from fully tactical like this, uh, to the, uh, tactical practical, like the, um, like the Tonto or the, the great for the outdoors clip point. I mean, of course you can use anything tactically, but the clip point seems like the most for outdoors chores. And this one seems like the most for other chores and uh very cool sheath. I have mixed emotions about it. <coughs> Sorry, not emotions, mixed thoughts on it. Um, it's very cool because you can unscrew these um, Chicago screws here and take these off, these green parts off, and then you can open this up and clean it out. If you're on some adventure and it gets filled with sand or, or crap, you can always open it up when you get home and uh, or in, in the field easily and clean it out. So I think that that is a very, very cool feature. One thing that uh, I, I haven't, I can't probably speak to yet, but it it seems awfully thick, and I have a I, I have a feeling I'm going to run into screw problems. I'll have to get new screws to make something like my discrete carry concepts clip work on the thickness of this, but maybe not, maybe not, maybe I just need some less wimpy screws um, uh, to span that distance. The handle itself is symmetrical, um, so they put this jimping on the top where the thumb goes so you can index it in the dark and you know exactly where that edge is um which on this one it's it's semi double-edged so you could still get away with it uh, if you were slashing uh you could still get away with having it misoriented but certainly not with the tanto or the clip point so i like that the handle is symmetrical but i also like that they give you uh, this indexing jimping it's not just for indexing it's quite grippy uh, but that'll tell you in the dark where your edge is. Um, they have jimping the same way on the pommel. So if you grab it in reverse grip, you can also tell which way the edge is oriented. Thank you, guys. Like, that is a really simple but thoughtful thing. Uh, I, I like I like things that are done for indexing. Uh, features that are put on there for figuring out which way the edge is oriented if you can't look at it and you don't want to touch it. You have a, a flare in the center, or it's more, it's less a flare in the center. You have a dip 
uh, towards the back and towards the front. And that gives you great grip, even in that sort of sideways shovel grip. And then you have an extended tang. So this is a full tang blade uh, with a little peekaboo back there uh, for breaking glass, maybe, or attitude adjustment or whatever. Armature 4, highly, highly recommend this knife in one of its uh, incarnations. And it might be a good uh, recommendation for a, uh, this is my only fixed blade knife. If you're a, if you're a full-on folder collector and but think you should get a fixed blade knife or don't have many of them and want one, uh, that one is worth the 80 bucks all day long and it will be an incredible, capable knife. Uh, for as long as you want it. So uh, thanks for coming and checking out the nine rapid reviews. I, I'm, I will do close-ups of these, uh, but until I do, I just wanted to uh, not fall behind totally. And I also wanted to show you what I've been carrying an awful lot. So uh, very happy to do that. Um, well, uh, be sure to join us for on Sunday for a uh, wonderful conversation. Uh, we'll be, we will be talking to C. Reisner Cutlery uh, coming up here next week. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, Austin, he's a great guy. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so by scanning the QR code on your screen or going to Patreon. That's theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim Morgan his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.